This is Molly and welcome back to my YouTube channel. We're going to take a look at the USA's natal astrology chart. And this is the chart that shows us the energy of the country. Now, this is a topic that is contested by astrologers because there are different charts out there for the U.S. And you think about how a country forms through many events. And so there is a chart based on Washington, D.C. as the location. There's a chart here uh, in Philadelphia. I'm using this one because this is when the Declaration of Independence was signed. And the time I'm using is one that is referenced in other astrology charts, and it's referenced through some documentation from those who signed the Declaration of Independence, saying it was later in the day, later in the afternoon, and many of them were astrologers. And so there's this is actually a big topic in astrology, but I find that this is a strong chart to use. So all that being said, let's take a look at what we have here. So we have a rising sign of Sagittarius, which fits with the personality of the happy, loud, big American, or the American uh, who is a traveler, uh, the positive, smiling American attitude. Uh, and that is, of course, the ascendant being how one presents themselves to others. Now, we look here in the chart at a few more things because, because the time is contested. Uh, the, the time of birth, of creation, shifts where the planets show up in various houses. So we might not have the exact house location for each planet, uh, but we can look at the interactions between the planets on this day. So on this day, July 4th, 1776, we see that the sun is at 13 degrees of Cancer. Jupiter and Venus are conjunct in Cancer. Cancer being the energy of home, protection, family values, uh, the energy of safety, emotional needs, uh, sharing space, emotional connections, uh, the homeland. Those are some of the strong themes of Cancer. And then we also have this Mercury at 24 degrees of Cancer. So very strong Cancer energy here in the U.S.'s chart. We also have strong Gemini energy with Mars at 21 degrees of Gemini and Uranus at 8 degrees of Gemini. And in this chart, and in a few versions of this chart, this Uranus is on the descendant here. So opposing what is seen in by others. The ascendant being the mask or how others perceive you before they know you. And Uranus being unpredictable uh, energies. Uh, information in Gemini. Innovation. Bold ideas. New ways of thinking. New ways of moving ahead. Strong technology energy here in the U.S. chart. Uh, the other important energies to take a look at would be this moon at 27 degrees of Aquarius, we the people. The moon in these charts represents the public, Aquarius being the people. So I think that there is something to be said for the founding fathers choosing a moon in Aquarius intentionally. Uh, and then we have over here, Pluto at 27 degrees of Capricorn retrograde. This is energy I'm going to talk about in just a moment, because this is the American Revolution energy that's coming back around. A few more things. We have Chiron, 20 degrees of Aries. Chiron return is coming back around. We're going to have a Uranus return in the next decade. And another energy here, we have Saturn at 14 degrees of Libra. And the Saturn directly squares the sun, which is quite an interesting energy because it takes the country out of this nationalism or this emotionalism or the sensitivity and brings in the objectivity and responsibility 
of diplomacy with Saturn in Libra, but the square here, the square here certainly affects the running of the country. Neptune at 22 degrees of Virgo is also important because we're going to have a Neptune opposition coming up as well. So I want to talk about some of these transits that are happening here in the U.S.'s chart. And I'm going to get to that in just a moment. A few other things that I observed here is that the Neptune is squaring Mars at 21 degrees of Gemini. And I think of this as it relates to information, health care, uh, how to move ahead. Certainly the two-party system is strong with Gemini energies, although that is true in other countries as well. Um, but even confusion shows up when there is a square to Neptune. And uh, there's something to be said here about the Mars and Gemini desire to be very active, a multitasker, communicating, getting things done, moving in multiple directions, very busy, very active. Again, technology with Gemini, uh, such as text messaging, social media, email, all of that. And then this Neptune and Virgo energy diffusing it and removing some of this productivity energy. I, I feel like this is very strong in the U.S.'s chart where things could be said or actions are meant to be taken and then it goes through the administrative process and it doesn't happen. So it's quite interesting to see this strong Neptune squaring action-taking Mars. Now, no chart is perfect. Every chart has squares, and squares are always about growth. And that growth can be through challenges, through frustration, through delays. And it's showing us what needs to get worked out, you know, what needs to be moved through. Uh, a few other things to point out to you. The moon has a wide trine to this Mars. And that, again, is about communications and information, people wanting to be informed, um, certainly relates to the overall communications across the country, uh, mainstream media, and getting information out to the people. That's really the only energy that connects with this moon, though. There's no other planet that connects to the people. And then, of course, uh, we have this really fascinating opposition between Mercury in Cancer and that Pluto at 27 degrees of Capricorn retrograde. And so, again, this is the people, what is said, how it's spoken, how it's communicated, what is shared, because Mercury is the communicator and how information is presented, uh, the emotional appeal, if you will, and, and how it can hit the heart uh, or how it has to be said in a certain way to not make people defensive or too sensitive. Uh, it's kind of like, how do you take care of people when you have this opposition to Pluto in in Capricorn that is the heavy hitter here of authority, business, politics, government, uh, what, is be what is really being done behind the scenes and how that's on a whole other page than perhaps what is being communicated. You know, the cancer energy can be naive um, and want to feel good, want to feel safe. And this is something that can show up as, it could be how the U.S. is perceived 
um, if it's too soft hearted at times or if there's information um, that is communicated in a way to not hurt feelings. So it's quite an interesting energy here in the U.S.'s chart. I would then also bring in how this Mercury squares Chiron and uh, the desire for independence and, and being an individual is very strong in the U.S. Uh, to do something your own way and, and how do you do that with a family or, or maintaining that safe place to go. So you have that square to Chiron, which can be a very sensitive point. And again, that reiterates communication style. And then we also have that energy of a T-square with Saturn squaring the Sun, opposing Chiron, creating this T-square. And that is the energy of initiation and starting something new and, and pulling yourself up by the bootstraps and how you come to America to start a new life um, and, and what you do to begin. And that's because uh, Aries, Cancer, and Libra are initiation energies. Uh, this is the hard work. Um, this is a home. And this is, you know, how you're able to to follow your own path and do what you need to do for your life. This would also be personal interests that are in conflict with diplomatic missions, what's seen in the world, what is responsible, and then what, what you want to do, but what you have to show up for, to sit at the table, so to speak. So every astrology chart has tension in it, and that's where there can be a lot of, as I said, growth, and that's where the development happens. I think that this is an intentional chart that the founding fathers knew what was being initiated energetically, especially with this Jupiter conjunct Venus. And I think that we are certainly beginning a very important checking in on these energies. And so I'm going to do a second video for you here where we're going to look at the transiting planets that are moving through this chart because there are actually four significant energies I want to point out to you and it certainly deserves its own video. So I'll put that link right below this video and we'll go into the next chapter of this conversation. I'll see you over there.